This is indeed a joy to have you worshiping with us today. The word of God according to Psalms 118 verses verse 24 declares, This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is recognized as Youth Sunday. On behalf of all youth worshiping with us, I trust that we have great time together in the Lord. At this time, I will call our sister Persis to, greet, to grace us with our opening prayer. Hallelujah. Let us all stand as we reverence God this morning. We are here for one purpose, and that is to worship Him. Because He desires that we worship God in spirit and in truth. Let us pray. Father and God, we thank you. We praise you. We adore you. You are the one and only true God. So as we come before you this morning, we thank you for this another opportunity that we can call upon your name. We thank you, dear God, for your presence with us. We thank you, dear God, for every individual that is yes, here Lord. this morning. We know, dear God, we are different. We have our different issues, but we pray, dear God, that at this time, we will forget about ourselves. Yes. Forget about the happenings. Forget about what we are going back home to and to concentrate on you. Yes, Father, Lord. as we go through this service, we pray that your presence will remain with us and that you will get the glory, the honor, and the praise as you deserve. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. The worship team will now come and lead us in our worship session. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is here with us. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we may ask or think. He's not a God that he should lie. He's not a God that we have to give him something for what he has done, but just to reverence him and give him the praise that is due unto his name. And as we sing, welcome Holy Spirit. We are in your presence, able to feel the presence of God running through our bones, through our lives, through our hearts, through our minds. Welcome Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. You deserve all the glory. All the honor and all the praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. There is none like you, God. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Welcome. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill me. Fill me with your power. Live inside of me. Presence. We are in your presence. Fill me 
Hallelujah. Let us ask him to fill us. Hallelujah. So that we can be filled to the rim. That nothing else but his Hallelujah. Holy Spirit can be with us. Hallelujah. We bow down and worship Yahweh. We are lifting up Jesus in our worship this morning. In our praises. In our reverence. Hallelujah. We bow down and worship Yahweh. Hallelujah. We bow down and worship Yahweh. We bow down. We bow down and worship Yahweh. We bow down and worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. He's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. So he deserves our praise. My hallelujah belongs to him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. My hallelujah. My
deserves all of the glory all of the praise all of hallelujah. the honor hallelujah jesus and while we collect this morning's tithes and offering we'll sing hosanna in the highest let our king be lifted up hallelujah he's worthy hallelujah what a eternity
Blessed be your name, Jesus. At this time, we call back to our moderator. Hallelujah. Now we ask Sister Davina to pray over the offering. Good morning, church. Today, I would like to give God thanks for bringing us one more time in the sanctuary as a church. As we lift him up with our worship, praise, and thanks, and also our offering and tithes that we just brought before you, may we lift him up and give him in the praise. And may we use it to lift up the building and the church in his name and in his kingdom. We thank those who give and those who did not have to give at this time. May the Lord will bless them so that they'll be able to give and to keep them. Amen. And let the church say, Amen. You may be seated.
We will now be favored with a poem by Licia Stevens. Good morning, church. This poem is entitled, Lift Jesus Higher. Help me lift up the Savior. He alone is able to give your life favor. Lift up Jesus so he can come close to you. He is the anchor that guides you through. Every time we lift up the Savior, all men are drawn to him. He, uh, he alone is the light that shines bright from within. Jesus, oh, how you show your glory for all to see. Every day you save souls and set them free. Why do you care for us so much? As we praise you, we are in awe of your special touch. Lord, I lift your name high because you are so deserving. Help me fight the good fight of faith, no matter how much I am hurting. Our scripture reading will be done by Javier Archibald. morning church the scripture reading is taken from st john chapter 12 verses 23 to 26 and verse 32 and jesus answered and jesus answered them saying the hour is come that the son of man should be glorified verily verily i say to you except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die it abides alone but if it die it brings forth much fruit he that loves his life shall lose it, and he that hates his life in this world shall keep it to life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If, man, if any man serve me, him will fa my father honor. And verse 32. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to me. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. It's, time, it's now time for the word of God, so I would like you to stand and help me make welcome our dear pastor to the podium, Pastor Priska Hulga. Praise the Lord. We give God thanks this morning for the young people. We continue to encourage them to serve the Lord. I know sometimes the young people don't always get it right, but we encourage them. Before I share the word, there is a song in my spirit which says, He is exalted. He is exalted on high. Creation shall praise him. Saints shall adore him. For he is exalted on high. Hallelujah. And I want to encourage all of us who have mouths to open our mouths and give him praise. He is exalted. He is exalted. He is exalted on high. Yeah. Shall praise him, 
shall praise Him. Creation shall praise Him. Saints shall adore Him, for He is exalted. Creation shall praise Let us pray. Oh God and our Father, we give you thanks for another day. As we have just been singing, creation shall praise him. Every knee will bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We come today to lift you up. To worship you, to give you the glory and the honor that is due unto your name. We pray even now, Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, you will speak to us and speak through us. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, every young person who are present and who will listen in the, in the near future. I pray that the power of your Holy Spirit will minister to each one of us. And God, in our lives, you and you alone will be glorified. I pray even now, Father, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts will be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. I welcome each and every one to the house of God this morning. And I gave a special welcome to the Ross University lab team who are visiting with us this morning. Let's give them a warm evangelistic faith welcome. We are happy that you have chosen to come to be with us. And we pray God's blessings upon you as we continue in our worship. For this month, our theme is Lift Up Jesus. We have just come out of the Lenten season. And I want to share with us this morning the word which the Lord has put in my spirit to share with us. And so our topic for today is lift up Jesus, the Son of God. It's not just any and any person that we are recommending that you lift up. But we are recommending that you lift up Jesus, the Son of God. We have just been singing, He is exalted. And indeed, He is exalted. Humans... And all creation were created by God for one purpose. And that is to bring glory and honor to God. It's not to dress up, get good jobs, look fancy, have big houses, make a lot of money. All of that comes. But our main purpose is to give glory to God. Our purpose is not to gain honor and praise and glory for ourselves, but it is to glorify God in all that we do. It is very easy for us as humans to boast of our special gifts and our talents and our possessions and our positions and our acquisitions and we boast about our devotion 
do those things. But if these things do not give glory to God, they can lead to pride and ultimately destruction. There's a passage of scripture that we have been looking at found in the book of Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 to 11 and I would like all present to help me read it. Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 to 11. Let's read. After 2, 1, 2. And took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And became obedient unto death. things under the earth that Jesus Christ is Lord let's read verse 9 again please wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name thank you for the next few moments, I want us to observe the life of Jesus and then examine ourselves in light of what he has done. Jesus, the Son of God, he was lifted up as a child. In the book of Luke chapter 1 verses 36, 26 to 36 that I will not read, you can read in your spare time, but trust me that I'm telling the truth. The angel Gabriel visited a young virgin by the name of Mary and said to her, Hail Mary, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. She was told by the angel that she had been chosen by God to be the mother of the Christ child the Savior, the Messiah, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Mary questioned how this would be possible, seeing she was a virgin and she knew not a man. So the angel explained to her how it would be done. Mary's response to what the angel told her was, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word. Mary trusted the angel Gabriel. She believed what he said and she was willing to be part of this great plan to bring salvation to the earth. Most of us are familiar with the Christmas story. In the book of Luke chapter 2 verses 8 to 20, the angels appeared to some shepherds who were in the field taking care of their sheep and told them that a savior would be born who is the Christ and he would be born in Bethlehem. The shepherds realizing what the angels had said did a very strange thing. They left their sheep and went to Bethlehem to see whether those things that the angels had told them about was really so. And when they got to Bethlehem, indeed they found Mary and a young child there, just as the angel had told them. And they went, they saw, and they returned. But they did not return the same way that they came. They returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. I want us to understand today that when we lift up Jesus, it means to raise him up, to elevate, to make lofty, to exalt, to put on high. 
And this is what the, the shepherds were doing when they realized that what the angel had told them was true. They were praising God. So when we get to the house of God and when we are in our homes, we ought to elevate, lift up, exalt Jesus because he is worthy to be praised. At Jesus' dedication, eight days after his birth, there was a man named Simeon who was a devout man. He was a just man. And he was told by the Holy Spirit that he would not die until he had seen the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior. So when Mary and Joseph came on the eighth day to do the customary thing, there was Simeon in the temple because the Spirit of God had told him he need to go to church today. Let me tell you, the Spirit of God speaks to us and it brings us to the places where we ought to be. And when Simeon got to the temple that morning and Mary and Joseph and the baby were there, Simeon took the child up in his arms and began praising God and he said Lord now let me die in peace for I have seen the Savior you have given to the world Jesus was lifted up even as a child Simeon said to Mary a sword shall pierce your soul for this child shall be rejected by many in Israel and this is to their undoing but he will be he will be the greatest he will bring the greatest joy to many others and the deepest thoughts of many hearts shall be revealed even today some people disregard Jesus but other people lift up Jesus Jesus is a source of joy Jesus is a source of comfort Jesus is a source of fulfillment to those who put their trust in him the wise men lift up Jesus in his birth while he was a child in Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 11 the word of God tells us that the wise men traveled for miles and followed a star because they were astrologers. And when they were looking, they recognized a particular star. Did we say creation shall praise him? The stars shall praise him. The moon shall praise him. The sea and all its inhabitants will praise him. And every man, woman, boy and girl on earth must praise him. Yeah. for he deserves our praise yeah. the wise men they saw the star and they recognized that a child was born but it was not just an ordinary child it was a king usually when a child is born you call him prince or princess but he wasn't born prince or princess he was born king and so they followed the star and for days and weeks, maybe years, some people believe, they followed the star. When they came to Bethlehem, they inquired where this child would be. And Herod, who was king at the time, did something that most people who are holding on to position will do. He, he said to them, when they inquired about him, the child, he said, He's going to be born in Bethlehem because this is what the scripture says. But when you find him, bring me word that I may come and worship him also. Herod had no plans to worship him. How could you say that? Read the story. When Herod realized that the, the, the wise men did not bring back the response, he decided and made a decree that all the children, two years old and under, males should be killed. Because that was about the time that the child, that the wise men came and that was the age of the child. But the wise men were told in a dream, 
in a vision do not go back to Herod for Herod is trying to kill this child when the wise men got the instructions as to where the child would be born they went and they did something that all of us should do these wise men they presented unto him gifts and when I was reading this it came forcefully to me the wise men traveled with their treasures they did not leave it at home how many of us know that when something is valuable to us we don't leave it here and there and anywhere we either keep it on our person or we put it in a place where we deem it is safe the Bible said they opened their treasures those things that were valuable to them and they presented to him gifts gold frankincense and myrrh gold is still valuable today how many of us have something made of gold or something that we think is made of gold <laughs> because a lot of times the things that we have that we think are made of gold they are gold washed gold plated gold something else but they are not genuine gold because gold is such a valuable metal that people don't like have it lying about so easily it's expensive it is still the means by which we do services and buy goods you know this money that we have the paper dollar years ago money came into existence because people could not carry around the gold so they would keep the gold in a chest on the heavy lock and key and they would make paper the value of the gold that they had in the chest but brothers and sisters right now I believe that these papers that we have they really don't have any value because lots of countries don't have that supply of gold to back the money the paper dollars that we have so they presented to him gold secondly they presented frankincense frankincense is a hard gum like material that comes from the trunk of a bus belly a tree it is used in soaps and lotions and perfumes because of its aroma it's a sweet smelling gum then thirdly they presented to him myrrh myrrh is an oil and it comes from a tree grown in Arabia because of its anti-inflammatory properties it is used in salves wounds sores it's also used for indigestion for a chronic cough and to embalm bodies why would they give him uh, as we go along we'll find out even in Jesus's birth even the gifts that he was given tells us that he was exalted Jesus was exalted at his baptism in the book of St. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11 the word of God tells us when the Sadducees and the Pharisees came to John to be baptized he said to them I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance but he that cometh after me is mightier than I I can't even untie the lace of his shoes he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with power John also said in chapter 3 and verse 30 John said he referring to Jesus must increase but I must decrease if God is going to be glorified and if Jesus is going to be glorified in our lives he must increase and we and our selfish desires 
must decrease. In Matthew 3 and verse 16, Jesus, when he was baptized, coming straight up out of the water, the word of God tells us the heavens opened and the Spirit of God descended like a dove and lighted upon him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. There was no doubt that this man, Jesus, was and is the Son of God. God ensured that at every point of his life, he declared that he was not just an ordinary man, but he was indeed the Son of God who should be exalted. In the book of St. John chapter 4 and verse 26, we have the story of a woman, a woman from Samaria, who went to a well to collect water. And most of us know her story. She had five husbands. I don't know whether she married all of them and then left them. What caused them to leave her? But she had had five husbands and she was now with somebody else. And knowing her situation, she went to the well when it was not customary for other persons to go at that specific time. But Jesus knew where she would be and he went to the well to have an encounter with her. Jesus began the conversation with this woman and said, could you give me some water to drink? She said, how is it that you being a Jew ask me a Samaritan for some water? The Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. He said to her, if you knew who it was who was asking for, for you to give us some water, you would instead ask him to give you water. For the water that I would give you would be in you, living water springing up unto eternal life. She said to him, sir, where are you going to get this water? Because the well is deep and I don't see you have anything to draw this water from. So Jesus told her where the water would come from. She said, the Jews say that the Messiah will come and when he come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I that speak to you am he. Jesus revealed himself to a woman. Did you recall anywhere else where Jesus revealed himself to a man? When Jesus asked, whom do men say that I am? They say some say you are Isaiah, some say you are a prophet, but Jesus said, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. But he said to this woman, I that speak to you am he. I am the Christ. I am the Messiah. I am the Savior who would come. This woman, realizing who he was, left her water pot and went back to the city and said to the men, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Because of this woman's testimony, many believed and many went and heard Jesus for themselves and they also believed that he was indeed the savior of the world. As Jesus was entering into Jerusalem on a colt and we know that time as Palm Sunday, the multitude of the disciples and the people they rejoiced. And what did they do? They were praising God with a loud voice because of all the mighty and wonderful things that they had seen and heard. They were saying, blessed is the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. These people they exalted Jesus, even 
as he was on earth. Mary, Mary, the sister of Lazarus and Martha. In the book of John chapter 12 verses 1 to 18. A few days before Jesus' crucifixion, she exalted Jesus by doing something that caused even some of the disciples to become upset. Mary took a pound of spikenard, very expensive ointment made of pure nard. You know, sometimes you go to the perfume store and you get some, some there are some perfumes that are behind the glass case. You know those kind? Uh-huh. Those behind the glass case, how much they cost? Lots of money. And then they have those on the front there that people could come and just go pss, 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 and take a little tester. Well, this ointment, this perfume that Mary decided to buy for Jesus was an expensive perfume. Let's try to calculate the cost. They said the cost of that pound of perfume was one year's salary. If that was you, how much would that cost? One year's salary for somebody to buy a perfume costing that much means that that person they are going to present it to must be very important to them, don't you think? They must be high and exalted in their eyes. So Mary, having long hair, when Jesus was at a dinner, went and she thought about what Jesus had done for her. I want us for a moment to just think about what Jesus has done for you. He saved you. He healed you. He delivered you. He brought you out of trouble. He defended you. He did so many things for you. He protects you. He provides for you. Oh, hallelujah. When Mary thought about what Jesus had done for her, tears ran down her cheeks and dropped on his feet. And she used her long flowing hair and wiped them. Wipe the feet of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, people say, and I believe the scripture backs it up, a woman's hair is her glory. But imagine this woman taking her glory and wiping Jesus' feet. Let me tell you, he had to be exalted in her life. Then she broke open this perfume. Somebody sang the song, you don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster box. She opened it up and she poured it on Jesus. Listen, you know sometimes when we have our expensive perfume, we do a little pss, 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 because we don't want it to finish now. But she wasn't going to use this for anybody else. For nobody else was worthy of the position that Jesus held in her life. My brothers and sisters today, that is where Jesus belongs. High above anybody else. High above anything else. She opened it up and she poured it out. And while she was pouring out this, the fragrance of the perfume filled the whole room. And Judas said, what a waste. Imagine. Judas didn't buy anything. Judas didn't give Jesus anything. But he is saying that what this woman did with her money was a waste. I like Jesus' response. Jesus said, leave her alone. 
What did Jesus say? Leave her alone. Let me tell you sometimes when we are worshiping God and we lift up our hands and we dance around and we make a shout, people say it doesn't take all of that. But if Jesus were in the room, I believe he would say, leave her alone. Leave him alone. For you don't know what he did for me. Jesus said what she's doing. It is in preparation of my burial. Why would she do this? It had to be the Holy Spirit spoke to her. And tell her Jesus didn't have much time. So she anointed him with this sweet smelling perfume. You know the kind of perfume that even when you wash your clothes. You could still smell it. You know them kind? I don't mean the kind that um, when you do, and did you put on something, you wonder if you did put on anything. Not those kind. I'm talking about the kind that even when you take off your clothes, the smell of the perfume is still behind you. You enter the room and everybody say, what's that smell? Because of the aroma, the fragrance. And I believe, this is my belief, that even when Jesus was hanging on the cross, days after, he could still smell the, the fragrance of the perfume that Mary had anointed him with. Jesus, he was lifted up in his death. All of us have heard the story of the crucifixion. Jesus was crucified. Crucifixion is a method of capital punishment in which the victim is tied or nailed to a large wooden cross or beam lifted up in the air and left to hang until they are dead. The word of God tells us death by this means is extremely painful. Imagine, not only was Jesus hung on a cross, but prior to him being hung on that cross, he was beaten, beaten with what is known as a cat or nine tail, which is a leather strap with pieces of metal tied to it. So when he was given one lash, every lash that he got brought out pieces of his body. He was given 39 lashes. Anybody ever got 39 lashes? 39 lashes. By the time they were through with him, his body was red. And wounded. He looked like raw meat when you're chopping it up. And in that position, they hang him onto a cross. Wherever that piece of wood touched, brought pain. But that wasn't all. They said, You say you are the king of the Jews, so a king needs a crown. They didn't make a nice fancy crown like they put on kings and queens or the one that was on Queen Elizabeth who died a couple of months ago. But they made a crown of thorns, spikes, long spikes about four inches long and they pressed it down on his head. Say, oh you're a king, take your crown. The blood gushed down his eyes and all around his head and he bore all of that pain when he was being lifted up in an effort to embarrass him they nailed him between two thieves you know what they say birds of a feather flock together you show me your company and I tell you who you are. So they nailed him among thieves. So I guess they were trying to say he too was a thief. But there on the cross he was suffering. You know why? 
It was just for you, just for you. Jesus came and did it just for you, just for you, Ooh. just for you. Ooh. Jesus came and did it just for you, just for me, just for me. Jesus came and did it just for me, just for me, just for me. Jesus came and did it just for me. When Jesus was on the cross and he was about to give up the ghost, the word of God says, he looked up to heaven and he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Imagine, somebody is going to do that to you and you're going to say forgive them? Brothers and sisters, I want to tell us this morning, there is nothing that anybody has done to you that you cannot forgive them for. Tell your neighbor. Neighbor, no matter what someone has done to you, you can forgive them. Tell them again, neighbor, no matter what someone has done to you, you can forgive them. Tell your neighbor, touch them and say, neighbor, no matter what, someone has done to you you can forgive them because I guarantee you nobody will do you what they did to Jesus and if Jesus can forgive then we should forgive Jesus went through extreme pain pain like no other man because the other two thieves did not get the beatings that he got. They did not have a crown of thorns on their head like he had. Jesus knew that this was the only way that you and I could be saved. So he did it. Just for you. And just for me. Lift your hands and say, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for doing that. Just for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. While Jesus was there hanging on the cross, the earth began to quake. How many of you have ever experienced an earthquake? Anybody? How do you feel when the earth is quaking? When the earth starts shaking, I remember the first experience I had when the earth began to quake. I was a young girl then. On the 8th of October 1974 that is when the earthquake knocked on sink its door. I never heard more praying until the earthquake came. Anybody remember the song? When you, if you're so young you won't remember it. But that morning there was an earthquake. The chimney up at Brooks Estate broke off. A number of chimneys broke off. The earth was shaking and shaking. And I was wondering, why is my father shaking the building? Because it was early in the morning. Only to realize that it wasn't him shaking the building, but the earth was quaking. And guess what? Lots of people flocked to the church. And a lot of people said that they are serving the Lord. But when it settled down. And the earth stopped shaking. The people went right back to their normal behavior. I remember in the 80s. Every day there was a tremor. 
every day I recall coming to church on Wednesday night and people were outside waiting to come to church but after it settled you don't see them anymore the earth shook listen let me tell you God is still in control of this world no matter what is going on God is in control he shook the earth and when the earth began to quake the centurion who was involved in the process of crucifying Jesus I don't know if he believed before but when he saw what was going on he stood up and he said truly truly he is the son of God let me tell you it doesn't matter what people believe or don't believe the fact that Jesus is the son of God will not change he is the son of God he is the son of God brothers and sisters Jesus was exalted at his birth Jesus was exalted at his baptism Jesus was exalted in his ministry on earth Jesus was exalted at his death and Jesus wants to be exalted in our lives it is now our turn to lift up Jesus how can we lift up Jesus first of all by trusting him as our Lord and Savior by asking him to forgive us of our sins for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God by believing that he is the Son of God and thirdly by confessing with your mouth that Jesus Christ he is the Son of God that he died for your sins that he rose again and that he's coming again secondly we can lift up Jesus by showing love to others the Word of God tells us in the book of Matthew if you do something to the least of these my brethren you do it unto me by helping others helping the needy visiting the sick and the shut in and the imprisoned by feeding the hungry by being hospitable to one another and in particular by being hospitable to strangers by using our gifts and our talents and our skills in the service of God and in his worship there is something that every one of us can do to lift up Jesus by giving our time our treasures what treasures do you have our talents our gifts by telling others about Jesus all of us have the opportunity daily to tell others about Jesus whether by word of mouth in a conversation on whatsapp Instagram YouTube TikTok what kind of things we send in these in these messages here what do we share huh do we share anything about Jesus on TikTok? Brothers and sisters, I want us to understand that the same thing that we can use to do bad, we can use it to do good. Some of the messages that we send around on our phones, they should say something about Jesus. They should lift up Jesus in our conversations all the different areas of social media we are supposed to lift up Jesus because Jesus should be lifted up in our lives the more we tell others about Jesus the more he will be lifted up Jesus said and as I am closing in John chapter 12 and verse 32 that we read this morning Jesus said and I if I be lifted up from the earth will draw all men unto me and it does not only mean the male kind but all human being Jesus was lifted up on the cross and crucified and as a result of this every ethnic group 
Chinese, Japanese, Kittitians, Nivisians, Anguillians. It doesn't matter what ethnic group you come from. Every language, French, Spanish, Dutch, Latin, Greek, Hebrew. It doesn't matter your culture. It doesn't matter your age or your sex. All people will be drawn to Jesus. When we lift up Jesus in our service, rather than lifting up ourselves, let us lift up Jesus. And when we lift up Jesus, people everywhere will be drawn to him. When Jesus was on the earth, many people followed him. Many people followed him. Even at his death, crowds followed him. When he was lifted up, it was the final straw. The final thing that needed to be done to bring salvation. I challenge all of us today as I close. Whatever we do, whether we are at work, at church, or at play, in our actions, in our words, let us determine to lift up Jesus and bring glory and honor to him. Let us bow our heads. You have heard the word. And I believe that some part of the message has ministered to each of us. If you have never asked Jesus to come into your life and to save you, this is an opportunity for you to do so. He paid the full price so that you and I could have eternal life. The word of God tells us that it is appointed unto man once to die. Jesus died. And one of these days we too will die. We don't know when. We don't know where. And we don't know how. But we know for sure we will die. I pray today that as our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, that we will focus upon our lives. And as we focus on our lives, let us ask the Lord Jesus, this same Jesus who was crucified for our sins. Let us ask him, to forgive us. Some of us, we, we have done things we know we shouldn't have done. Some of us, we didn't know these things were wrong, but we did them anyway. Some of us, we sin by omission or by commission. It doesn't matter. Let us ask the Lord to forgive us of our sins. Join me in this prayer. Dear Jesus, I acknowledge that I have sinned. I have sinned in word, in thought, and in deed. By omission and commission. Please forgive me of all my sins. Please come into my life and make me the person you want me to be. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you rose again from the dead and you're seated at the Father's right hand making intercession for me. By faith, I accept forgiveness for my sins. Help me, Lord from this day forward to lift you up in my life in Jesus name I pray Amen Father you have heard the confession of our mouths and you know our thoughts and the intents of our hearts I pray for each one who has opened their mouth to make these confessions that in your mercy you will forgive us and you will help us in our daily lives to lift you up 
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.